Blockchains hold the potential to revolutionize countless industries, from finance to the World Wide Web. And one area in which multiple industries can be completely disrupted is with intellectual property. And now non-fungible tokens and NFTs are unlocking an insane amount of potential here. And today I want to talk about a major non-crypto use case for blockchains that offers groundbreaking solutions in the areas of intellectual property that has just arrived in the middle of this crypto bear market where a lot of people are checked out and completely missing this. So don't be one of them. You're here watching this video right now, and so you definitely wanna pay attention to this. I'm gonna explain everything that you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, get to the head of the next crypto wave, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about blockchains and intellectual property and a potentially groundbreaking solution to fix this problem. So one reason I'm making this video is we just saw a major announcement that Story Protocol is coming out of the scene early next year, and that they just raised over $54 million uh, from various investors, including A16Z, uh, Paris Hilton's 1111 Media, and also Samsung Next. And this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I just really wanted to talk about this project because... It's a non-crypto blockchain application that has massive potential that people would actually use. And it unlocks the power of NFTs in a way that I've been talking about for years now on this channel. You know, I've been excited about NFTs ever since they came out. But I don't think that, you know, digital pictures on the blockchain are the end game here. I think there's lots of other things we can do with NFTs like real estate, intellectual property, and so much more. And this is a real world example that's coming on the scene right now with Story Protocol. So let me break down exactly why this is such a big deal, starting off with the problem that it solves. All right, so let's start off with the idea of intellectual property. So just for clarification, let's define what that actually means. Well, basically, it's any work that comes from the human mind or as a product of creativity. So things like, you know, a song, a painting, a photograph, a written book, this video that you're watching, these are all different examples of uh, intellectual property. And when you're talking about intellectual property law, there's really four major categories, which are patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets. And there are some major problems with intellectual property today and the current systems that we use to register and track the use of an individual's intellectual property. So basically, whenever you put some type of intellectual property out into the world and people consume it, you know, you should get compensated for that in some way, unless you've explicitly said that they can su consume it for free. And if you're going to get paid, you run into a couple of problems. Number one, you have to know when people consume the content so that you can get paid for it. And then you actually have to get paid and trust that when you're supposed to get paid, you're going to. And that also the same applies when someone else uses your intellectual property, uses your work, uh, whether it's, you know, for their own ends or to get paid that you are then able to get compensated for that or tell them to stop doing that if you don't want them to. All right, so let's look at a real world example of intellectual property and the problems that face with the current system. So it's not so abstract. Let's just take music, for example. OK, so let's say that you're a musician and you write a song, you record it and then you upload it to, you know, Apple Music. You put it on Spotify. So people can stream it. So there, there's some problems with this. OK. How do you know that these platforms are accurately tracking everything and giving you what you're supposed to? You know, even worse, if you have a label or a publisher, how do you know that they are actually recording everything that you're supposed to on your behalf and not hiding anything and that you're getting compensated what you're supposed to? There's a lot of trust, these intermediaries, and you have lots of problems with other people creating derivative works of your content, whether someone's taking your music and remixing it and posting it on one of these platforms, you may or may not even know they're doing this, or somebody makes a TikTok video with it. Somebody might take an AI and use your voice to do a guest feature on their track. There's so many different things and it's nearly impossible to stay on top of all this stuff and our existing systems require way too much trust and are completely opaque to solve these types of problems well enter into blockchain to solve these problems so you have to understand that blockchains provide so many more values opposed to these opaque centralized systems because blockchains are trustless all right and they're also transparent 
because the old model of recording and compensating people for the usage of their intellectual property is completely opaque. You don't really know what's happening behind the scenes. It requires a lot of trust and it's not transparent. There's no visibility for you to actually audit the process. So instead though, with blockchain, what if you could basically know that every time someone consumed your paid work, that you would get paid immediately and that you would get paid the correct amount without having to trust somebody else worry-free in real time? Well, that's the whole idea here. And Story Protocol basically aims to create the intellectual property layer for the internet and to create standards for how we do this with media. This is exactly what I've been talking about my channel for years now, and they're coming to the front of the pack for this effort. So they talk about basically as, you know, Git revolutionized the development of open source software, they want to transform the development of creative intellectual property. First, to create a standard for tracking the origin and evolution of intellectual property. So we need standards in this space. The internet has always needed standards to be able to have a common way of doing things, just like HTTP is a standard that we use in, you know, the internet, TCP IP. In blockchain world, we use ERC-20 tokens so that our cryptocurrencies are compatible with wallets, exchanges, things like that. In a very similar way, we need standards for intellectual property. And the second is we need a seamless and scalable licensing regime because another problem with intellectual property is if you want to actually, you know, use it, a lot of times there's this, you know, negotiation process that can take a long time and also doesn't have a standard way of going through it. It's just the sort of back and forth and different people are getting deals. But what if you could basically create a seamless, streamlined way to do this where people, if they just want to use your stuff, here's their agreement on how to do it. That's what the smart contracts are for. And you can do this at scale. Now, that's the whole idea of how this works, that we can create new intellectual property standards so that people don't have to deal with middlemen and that whenever you know an artist puts their work out there, that when other people can consume it, they can get paid in real time. If someone else wants to use their work, the blockchain just supports the agreements that allows them to do this, okay? And they're gonna get paid. They don't have to worry about trusting other people in the process. Now, what exactly is the technical implementation behind the scenes? What makes all this stuff work with blockchains? Well, the protocol is officially not scheduled to launch until the first part of 2024. So we don't exactly have complete transparency onto what's happening behind the scenes, but I've done a couple different things like read through the GitHub repository uh, for the Steward Protocol organization itself. I've read through the job postings listed on their website and what the job descriptions are talking about what they're building. And so I can kind of connect the dots on how I think this is going to work. So first and foremost, I, I don't think this is going to be like a new blockchain layer one solution that's going to compete with like Ethereum, Solana, Binance, Smart Chain, all this type of stuff. I think it's going to be a smart contract based solution to do this type of reporting. So that's good in my eyes because that seems like a more legitimate strategy to use the existing blockchains that we have to do this. Now, which blockchains are they going to use? Well, by looking through, you know, the job postings and, and the stuff on their GitHub, uh, it looks like they plan to be an omni-chain protocol or multi-chain protocol. So they'll most likely be deployed to many different blockchains. Uh, but the languages that they use are building inside of Solidity. So, of course, Solidity is a language used for Ethereum smart contracts, but that's supported on many different blockchains, which are EVM compatible. So my guess is we'll probably see a lot of activity on things like Ethereum Layer 2s, like Optimism, for example. And so we know it's probably not going to be a new blockchain. It's probably going to be used smart contracts with Ethereum compatible technologies. Now, what, how are these smart contracts going to work? Well, it does look like the intellectual property will be accomplished with non-fungible tokens or NFTs, like I was talking about just a minute ago. I was reading their project uh, Nova API here, and you can see a lot of, you know, different things about, you know, NFTs and how they tie to this idea of stories, you know, with story protocol. I think the storytelling is going to be part of, you know, reporting intellectual property in this case. Now, another thing that I think is going to be part of this equation reading through their, uh, you know, organization here is definitely going to be oracles. OK, um, so we'll have to see. Right. That's just kind of a guess on my part. But what is an oracle? Well, an oracle is a way to get information that does not natively belong on the blockchain to the blockchain. So basically, like if you want to know what the weather is right now in your local area, or what the price of you know a stock is or something like that. You need an oracle for that because you can't, that information doesn't live on the blockchain. You need a trustless way to get that information on the blockchain. So the similar type of thing, 
I think we'll probably see oracles for attribution in this case so that we have a way to get some type of real world data onto the blockchain. I don't exactly know what all that information is going to be, but I bet that we will have the really necessary parts for this baked in directly with smart contracts on EVM compatible chains for now. So those are just some inferences on my part on how this might work. Now, time will tell. Again, this is slated for release early next year. So whenever this goes live, then we'll see, hey, were we right in our predictions in this video or not? And we'll be able to go back and see what that actually looked like. So let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Do you have any more information on this project? Are you excited about it? I want to hear from you. And also, do you think that intellectual property can be a massive use case for blockchain? Are, are you excited to see something that's got nothing to do with cryptocurrency price speculation? Because I sure am. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people come on my blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty and get ahead of the next crypto wave, then how can you do that? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to me courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I should have become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.